What's going on, stock market nerds? Shout out to my fellow degenerate traders. And of course, hi mom. I appreciate you watching the video again. We do have a lot of important stuff to talk about, as in what's going on with Jerome Powell and the Fed, what's going on with Yellen and the Treasury, and of course, what's going on with earnings. I wanna get into all of that, but of course, I also wanna talk about the absolute heater that the zero DTE DGEN option strategy is on. As of the moment that I'm filming this video, the strategy is officially 24 for 24. We are on a hot trading streak, so I'll break all of that down as well. But before we get into all of that, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe. And with that being said, let's rock. By the time the closing bell went dingity ding 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 today tuesday october 31st to officially close out the month for those of you who believe in the gregorian calendar things were looking pretty green s p 500 closes higher today tuesday but logs first three month losing streak since 2022. now obviously i want to break that down of what the actual losing streak is but first let's just revel in a little bit of the positivity, a little bit of the bullishness right here. Here's a look at the S&P 500 heat map and across the board, things were pretty green. Yeah, Caterpillar red because of its earnings, a little bit of weakness in video, which almost had a major breakdown today. But beyond that, things were looking pretty green. So, hey, if you were degenerate with some zero DTE calls, congratulations to you. I'm happy that you made a killing in the market. And if you were on the other side of the trade, well, I don't know. This is kind of awkward now. I guess you'll get them next time. But I know there's always another day in the world's largest casino that we call the old stonk market. Speaking of which, this morning on the stream, don't forget, I do stream every morning from 9 to 11 a.m. ET every single day that the market is open. And we talk about what to prep for for the market and then the actual market opening and then the degenerate trades that we want to get out of our system early in the morning, including the zero DTE options degen trade. I need to think of a better name for it. But as of now, here's proof of what went down today to close out the month. We had a spy put credit spread 414 by 413. Obviously, that one hit. And then also a Q put credit spread 346 by 345. And just for a little bit of proof that both hit, well, right here, the spy was obviously above 414. And then the Qs concluded the day at almost 351, just below 351. So obviously, both hit. And for those of you keeping score at home, that means that this strategy for the past two and a half weeks, weeks has been on an absolute heater 24 trades in a row zero misses all slam dunks home runs touchdowns whatever you want to call them but i'm just curious if it'll actually be able to survive tomorrow which is a big big day because we get the results of the fomc meeting and yes i will be getting into that but before we do i kind of want to give out a, a little bit of a shout out to my neighbors to the north to any of my canadian viewers to any of my maple syrup loving viewers, I feel for you. As of now, as of the moment that I'm filming this, Canada is technically in a recession. So from a very real honest standpoint, like I hope you're doing okay financially because the economy to our, for our neighbors to the north, not looking the best. I obviously, I have more economic stuff that I wanna get into, but just since we're talking about absurdity, Trump sues to block efforts to keep him off Michigan 2024 ballot. So yeah, I know that I'm not necessarily a political commentator, but clearly there's a big overlap with politics and the economy and thus the stock market. So we should talk about this kind of stuff, especially when there's craziness going on. The former President Trump is suing Michigan's top election official to block an effort to disqualify him from appearing on the state ballots in the 2024 presidential race. I honestly didn't even know that you could be taken off a presidential race, but apparently you can. Trump's lawsuit this week against Michigan Secretary of State Benson represents the latest escalation in a fight playing out in the courts across the U.S. over whether the Constitution's ban on insurrectionists holding office makes Trump ineligible for another term in the White House, with the assumption being that Trump himself is an insurrectionist. Now, obviously, depending on what side of the aisle you're on, you're going to either wholeheartedly agree with this or vehemently disagree with it. But I just wanted to cover it because obviously, as the political season picks up, 
it seems like volatility and tensions will pick up, which have the chance of spilling over into the stock market and the economy. So I just want to cover it so we're not blindsided by some big news. Speaking of the stock market and the economy, I want to let you know where we're at in a seasonality standpoint, just because we are concluding October, kicking off November. In November, on a seasonal standpoint, basically over the past couple decades, this month greatly favors the bulls. Now, that doesn't mean every single November in history has favored the bulls, but from a statistical standpoint, a lot of Novembers have definitely favored the bulls. In fact, check this out. Something for the bulls. November is typically the best month for the stock market. And just for those of you who want the odds, this is the average monthly performance from the 1950s until now. You can see November 1.7% edge. That's pretty sizable when you're considering data all the way back to the 1950s. But generically, if you look from the run of the start of October till the end of January, that whole period, that four month period, greatly favors the bulls. Now, obviously the next logical question is, will this particular November favor the bulls? And the honest answer is, I have no clue. And honestly, I don't think anyone on this planet could definitively tell you if November is gonna be green and bullish or red and bearish. But I do know what's gonna have a big sway on that are some of the major macroeconomic events that are coming down the pipeline. So I hope you're watching this in time because tomorrow, November 1st, Wednesday, November 1st at 2 p.m., we will be getting the results of the Federal Open Market Committee meeting, which is basically a fancy meeting where the voting Fed members decide what to do with the Fed interest rate. Are they gonna hike it up? Are they gonna bring it down? Or are they gonna keep it constant? I want you to know that as of now, there is a 97% chance that we stay at the current Fed fund rate of 5.25%. So there's a very, very high chance that it will remain unchanged, which then brings up the question, well, what's gonna prompt the volatility? What's gonna prompt the craziness? And that all comes down to a half hour later at 2.30, when the chairman of the Fed, Jerome Powell, gives his public press conference, where he lets the world know, is he hawkish, is he dovish, is he somewhere in the middle? So that's really what I'm gonna be paying attention to. And in fact, I'll be live streaming it. So if you're watching this now, you are more than welcome to join and watch the live stream, and we'll all watch the market go absolutely crazy together. I also just wanna throw it on your radar that to conclude this week on Friday, we have another important announcement. This is the unemployment report. This comes out on the first Friday of every new month. So an hour before the market opens, we're going to get the next one, which will have big implications on the next FOMC meeting, which is in mid-December. Now, just rewinding very quickly to Wednesday, this isn't the only thing going down. We get a big update from the Treasury. Before the Fed decision, all eyes will be on this big Treasury debt announcement Wednesday. Investors got a preview of the Treasury's direction on Monday when the department said it would be auctioning off $776 billion of debt in the final quarter of the calendar year 2023. So here's what you need to know and why it's important. Auctions of government debt, normally routine events for the Treasury Department, have suddenly become very important for financial markets. For those of you who are day traders, you might remember two weeks ago at 1 p.m., the market out of nowhere just decided to start to plummet, and that's because the Treasury auction went horrifically, and now all of a sudden everyone is once again paying attention to the Treasury auctions, bonds, and yields themselves. With debt, deficits, and bond yields all surging, investors are watching closely how the government will go to market with its borrowing needs. Both bond and stock markets have been volatile amid fears of oversupply at a time when the Federal Reserve is keeping monetary policy tight, aka quantitative easing and jacking up the Fed fund rate. And as investors are demanding a premium for interest rate risk and geopolitics is posing various wild cards. That's why an announcement Wednesday on refunding entailing the size of the auctions as well as the duration mix of the debt that will be issued is expected to draw even more market interest. So we have this going down, followed by the FOMC decision, followed by the chair Fed Powell himself speaking at 2.30. So to sum that all up, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be volatile. It's going to be a bunch of fun. In all reality, it doesn't add there because we are still in earnings season. When the market opens tomorrow, right before that, we're going to hear from Norwegian, CVS, and Wayfair. After that, we're going to hear from PayPal, Roku, Qualcomm, Airbnb, and Etsy. And then on Thursday, we hear from Apple, Palantir, Shopify, DraftKings, Carvana, Coinbase, Starbucks, and Cloudflare. And then to wrap the week up, we're going to hear from Fubo TV. So I think it's pretty evident that the volatility is here for good reason. We have a lot of major macroeconomic events when things seem like they're on edge. We have a lot of earnings to pay attention to, specifically Apple, the biggest company in the stock market. And then to top it all off, 
we have a lot of political tensions internationally and also here at home. I know that this could be a lot to throw at you, and that's why I created a weekly newsletter that breaks all of this down. I let you know all the major events from the past week and what to look to for the upcoming week, all the major macroeconomic events, their dates and their times, all of their earnings. And then I also give you the seasonality for the individual trading days of the upcoming week. And this is just an effort to put all the key events and happenings and developments in one place that you could easily reference opposed to bouncing around everywhere, every corner of the internet. And last but not least, to wrap this all up, I wanna let you know about the key levels I'll be watching in the S&P 500, specifically the ETF SPY. Recently, we were trading sideways, then the market absolutely vomited, sliced through one support, another support, looked like a fake out breakdown, but no, it was a real breakdown. And then we kept selling, 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 and now we're starting to bounce. That kind of makes sense because we don't have the development yet. The market doesn't know if it should still be this absurdly bearish. And now this is probably all going to change Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, where are the bears a little over exuberant? Have we come down too far, which would lead to a nice bounce to the upside? Or were the bears spot on, everything is horrible, and we'll continue to sell? My thesis is this, is we got oversold, overextended, and it was time for a mean reversion to play itself out. And surprise, surprise, we came right back up to this EMA cloud. Now here comes the big decision. Are we going to get above and close above 20 and represent some strength? Or are we going to get rejected right here, basically crater through 414, not hold at 411 and set up another test of 409? So those are my upside and my downside targets. I'm not necessarily bullish or bearish. I'm going to let the price action tell me what I should do. If you want an analysis in real time, don't forget to stop by the live stream. And if you want that handy dandy reference of what's going down for the week, don't forget to sign up for the newsletter, maccores.locals.com. That's what I have for you now. I hope you have a good one. Catch in the next video. Peace out.